And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to New Hampshire's Motor Speedway here in Loudoun as we get ready today for race number 27 of season 6 of the Mobile One Cup Series, our first race of the chase. Today, we're getting ready for a 30-lap event. Our Truck Series race really showed that it's going to be pretty difficult, I guess, for the chasers. A lot of chasers had trouble yesterday in the Truck Series event, and we're going to have to see what the chasers here in the Mobile Cup Series event are going to be able to do. Will they be able to survive this racetrack? On the pole position for today's race is going to be Daniel Voiles, a rookie here this season. Limited number of races, but they had a fast enough car to put him on the pole position for today's event. And alongside of him is going to be Anthony McCrory in the 88. Carson Gum lines up in third alongside of Richard Johnson with the top five being completed by Kyle Corbett. First chaser we find is going to be Emilio Navarrete rolling off from seventh place. Navarrete is tied right now in, I believe it would be a five-way tie for fifth place position right now 10 points behind the current points leader Sean Galligan in the chase standings next chaser we find would be James McLeod starting right behind him in the ninth position McLeod comes into this race also in that tie for fifth place as he also has a win this season and then as I look further back looks like the next chaser you come to would be rolling off from 11th place that would be Danny Wells our truck series winner here yesterday and the guy who comes in 13th in the point standings no wins this season could pick one up here and he'll start alongside a Dylan Young who is currently sixth in the chase standings so it looks like inside the top 12 we got a total of four chasers starting there I also see a few other drivers that are chase contenders just outside of the top 12 I see Joshua Collard there rolling off from 13th position so it's going to come down to who has a good run today and who doesn't. For those who do have a good run today, they're going to be able to carry good momentum over into next week's really tough race weekend because we're heading back to the terrible track of Thornton. However, drivers that end up having bad luck here today, they are going to be in a struggle for the next few races to try and catch back up and try and eliminate the poor finish they get today. We're going to have to see just which end of the spectrum these chase drivers will be in once they leave here at Loudoun. Time to get these cars rolling off, though. They'll complete a couple of pace laps, and while they do that, we will show you the starting grid for today's race. The 13 drivers that have made the chase are going to be the drivers that will be in the spotlight for today's event, and we will keep an eye on them all during the course of this 30-lap race. Here we go, though. The CNBC Prime the Profit 200 is about to be run, but we show you now your starting grid for today's event. Event, same as it was in the truck series event and Danny Wells we know was able to go from lap 2 all the way to a little past lap 30 on one tank of fuel is anybody in this field going to try and use that strategy try and stretch it and try and win this thing like Danny Wells did in the truck series event we're going to find out as the pace car peels off Daniel Voiles, Anthony McCurry get ready to get us underway and there it is, the green flag is out here at Loudon. We know the trouble spot is going to be turn four. Drivers seem to overdrive the corner coming out of four. They either hook the driver in front of them in the left rear or else they go up and slap the outside retaining wall and usually crowd a driver on their outside. Whoa, contact right there between Carson Gum and the leader Daniel Voyles. Voyles does a good job hanging on to it though. 
as they'll head into three. Now let's see how they do coming out of four. They're three wide back there with Dylan Young, Danny Wells, and I think that was uh, Joshua Michaels caught on the high side there. That could be a trouble area. Will they keep it together though? And Kyle Corbett nearly got turned around by Emilio Navarrete. That was close. And the caution flags go to wave. Caution is out. Wait a minute, I think they just wrecked back here. They did, James McLeod has been turned around right in front of the field. Henley gets around it. Dylan Young's got a little bit of damage though. I thought I saw Bob Jones, there he is. The hefty car is badly damaged. Bob Jones who comes in 14th in the points days just missed out on making the chase last week. And it's second bad week for the 14 machine. There's McLeod, I saw him get turned around in front of the field. Apparently he was able to continue on though. Not really that much damage though. I thought I saw some black smoke out of one driver's machine, but maybe not. Whoa, look out, they're backing up back here. What happened here? These are the leaders. They've caught up with the tail end of the field and must have been a wreck and the leaders came up right into it because there's fourth or sixth. I think that was actually driving for third and fourth. Whoa, contact. That was uh, McCurry, Johnson, and I believe Poti got a little bit of there. And we are looking at the leader as the cars that were on the lead lap are going to try and cycle their way around back onto the tail end of the lead lap. But Daniel Voiles is the current leader with Carson Gum. Caution coming out here. I believe it was for the James McLeod spin. Let's jump back and take a look at a replay of what happened. No driver is going to come down pit road here on lap number four. Oh, we saw Navra get into Kyle Corbett coming off of four here. Well, they did save it, but it did end up turning it into a four-wide battle then with Rogers and McLeod. And Corbett, I guess, didn't really take kindly to Navarrete's contact. Kind of forces him up the track, and McLeod was there. McLeod going to get turned to the outside retaining wall. Jake Rogers gets held up behind this. So does Danny Wells, Joshua Collard, a couple other chasers as well. The 99 and 34 that you see there, they are chase contenders. Jake Rogers going to... Makes some contact with McLeod. That turns him around. Oh, there's where Dylan Young got his damage. He got jacked up by the Bob Jones machine. So Dylan Young's going to have some rear end damage on his Qualcomm Chevy out of Turner Motorsports. But Bob Jones, I think out of everybody, sustained the most damage as he just flat out ran to the back of the 30 car. I guess he didn't realize that Dylan Young and all these others were slowing down to avoid the James McLeod Emilio Navarrete spin. And he's got a lot of damage to his hefty Toyota Camry out of McClure Racing. So... The caution flag is out. I guess we can say that three chasers were involved, but not really to the extent that I think they'll have to retire. Navarrete, McLeod, and Dylan Young are the chasers I'm talking about. So we're going to head back to Green Flag Racing now. I think all our chasers should still be on the racetrack. Get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. I don't think anybody came down pit road, at least of the leaders, that uh, caution segment. So we will restart here with a total of 24 laps to go. Lap seven is when the green flag will come back out. Daniel Voyles out in front, Carson Gum in second, Richard Johnson third, Eric Burton fourth, and Kyle Corbett runs in fifth. There's Ralph Mason, he's falling a lap down to the leaders. Think he actually may have come down pit road to repair a little bit of damage he may have sustained on the back straightaway when we saw the leaders kind of catch up with the tail end of the field there just after the caution flag came out. Navarrete will restart in sixth after the spin. Jo uh, Jays McLeod will continue on in seventh. Joshua Collard is 8th, Dylan Young is ninth, and Austin the Plant is in 10th. So there you go, from 5th on through 10th, all chase contenders. And it'll be Jeremy Mayer in 11th, 12th, Daniel Day. Jordan Hester, another chase contender, is up at 13th. Sean Galligan's got some rear-end damage on the Aspen Dental Toyota. Don't know where that came from, but he is in 14th place now. And you got Cody Lamas, 15th, Anthony McCurry, 16th, and George Roke, 17th. 18th is Aaron Williams Jr. making his final start. Jake Rogers is 19th and 20th is Alex Mays. The green flag comes back out. Let's find the rest of our chasers. There's Danny Wells restarted in 23rd. Sean Henley restarting back in 26th. Trent Dunham 29th and Jace Silver Fox in 30th. There's Dylan Poteet back in the 31st position. Megan Atkins is back in 34th place. I believe she is currently the last uh, running chaser on the racetrack as Carson Gum going to get by Daniel Voiles. For the lead, Voyles goes way wide through that corner. New leader, the driver of the 77. And Voyles trying to use the crossover to go back for second place on Richard Johnson, who had just passed him out of four for the runner-up position. And now it's going to be side-by-side -side again between those two. Meanwhile, Joshua Collard trying to work his way up inside the top five here. 
Collard also trying to look for his first win of the season. He's made the chase for the championship, but he hasn't been to victory lane yet. And look at the company behind him. Austin the plant, Jays McLeod, Dylan Young back there. And oh man, the two old cars just got on the wall. That was Eric Burton and Kyle Corbett. And it was right in front of some chasers. And yep, there's some chasers involved as everybody's piling in. Deanna Shelton is flipped. Michaels is flipped. Mayer, Burton, Corbett, Mason, Henley, Silver Fox, Roke, you name them, they're in it. Danny Wells is damaged. Alex May is involved. Daniel Day, Aaron Williams Jr., there's Mayer, there's Navarrete, Galligan, Hester, they're involved. And everybody else from Jays McLeod on back must have gotten a piece of it somewhere or other. Hayden Klein is involved. Roke is involved. McCrory, Duncan, Mason. Atkins may have gotten through it, I don't know. Jake Rogers, Dylan Young, Nick Musiola is smoking, Zach Rogers is done. And more drivers, Line Pit Road, Joshua Michaels, Charles Sanford, there's Cody Lamas, Deanna Shelton, and Tyson Broad. And wait a minute. Danny Wells is staying out? No, that's not Danny Wells, that was Anthony McCurry. There's Danny Wells on Pit Road. McCurry is staying out. And I thought he had some damage, but I guess not. Well, we're going to go to our pit lane camera here because Daniel Voiles and company are on pit road. Carson Gum first on, first off of pit road. Johnson comes out second. There goes McLeod, Galligan, Collard, Aaron Williams Jr., then Voiles, Alex May, Hayden Klein, Navarrete will continue on. So it looks like after all that carnage, it's Ralph Mason, the lap car, is going to come off pit road. I think the leader is going to be Anthony McCurry under caution. No, it isn't. It'll be Austin LaPlante in the 71 who stays out. So he is going to restart this race as the leader unless he comes down pit road at any point during this caution segment. Looks like the top four stayed out. LaPlante, McCurry, Megan Atkins, and Dylan Young, three chasers in that top four then it comes out Carson Gum who will restart in fifth place but a huge huge pile up after the two monster energy cars got together coming out of the final corner one car flipped and everybody just piled in let's look back at a replay we're now one third of the way through today's event at New Hampshire now Joshua Collard was able to get a run to the inside of the Kyle Corbett machine and I think Corbett just overdrove the corner like we've seen gets hooked by Eric Burton up into the fence they go and then here come some of those chasers that were running back there just outside of the top 10. There's Navarrete getting involved. Hester, Daniel Day, you see there. Corbett gets flipped over. Look at Cody Lamas gets jacked up, up into the catch fence after uh, getting nailed by George Roke. Michael's going to get flipped up in the air. There's Kenny McCrory back there. Danny Wells, Alex May. There's Sean Henley, another chaser, flipping upside down. Deanna Shelton gets flipped right up on top of the whole field there. She's flipped up on top of at least five, six cars. There's the uh, Dylan Poteet machine, I believe, up there in the air as well. You see the grill of his car facing up straight into the air. And, oh, well, I guess Eric Burton teleported to Pit Road. we got to see some other drivers that are involved there. I think Dylan Young may have actually hit Pit Road during this wreck. Zach Rogers, there's Nick Musiola. There's Charles Jackson. Here comes Charles Sanford. Not going to slow down at all. He runs into the back of Jackson. But... I think, oh, Trent Dunham was in it. I think the Qualcomm Chevy, yeah, Dylan Young made a pit stop right when that caution happened. So what perfect timing for the driver of the 30, Dylan Young. Great, great strategy there. Right place, right time. And he was able to get off pit road ahead of the leaders. And that's what cycled him around to start restart this race back in the fourth position. So Dylan Young... I don't know if he'd think about stretching it, but I do know that Dylan Young's going to find himself in some good track position after he was down pit road, probably the safest place on the racetrack, besides being up inside the top five when that wreck happens. Let's head back now to green. Several chasers involved in this one, and this could be the time now when the chasers are going to start having to, you know, kind of buckle up and, you know, pull themselves up by the bootstraps and try and recover from what's just happened here today at Loudoun. Get ready to go back to green flag racing. As I said, the top four did not come down pit road under that caution flag. One of them, Dylan Young, did not need to because he had come down pit road right when the caution flag was waving. Austin LaPlante's going to restart as the leader, though. LaPlante looking for his second win of the season as he's battling for the Mobile Cup Series Championship. He'll have to contend with the lap car of Ralph Mason, who is actually up to 19th place. That tells you how many drivers just retired from that big wreck. We'll update you on all of them in just a moment. Anthony McCurry lines up in second, third place Megan Atkins, and Dylan Young will be in fourth. And it's Carson Gum fifth, 
Sixth place is Richard Johnson. Chase McLeod seventh. Sean Galligan's up in eighth. Joshua College runs ninth. And Aaron Williams Jr. is tenth. Daniel Voyles, the pole sitter, is back in eleventh. Alex May twelfth. Hayden Klein's thirteenth. Emilio Navra in fourteenth. Fifteenth place will be Cody Lamas. James Silverfox in sixteenth. Seventeenth place Daniel Day. And 18th is William Duncan. Just like that, folks, we have only 19 cars on the racetrack, 18 on the lead lap as drivers such as uh, Jordan Hester, Jeremy Mayer, Danny Wells, Jake Rogers, George Roke, Nick Misiola, Zach Rogers, Sean Henley, Eric Burton, Joshua Michaels, Kyle Corbett, Charles Sanford, Tyson Broad, Kenny McCurry, Charles Jackson, Trent Dunham, Dylan Pote, Deanna Shelton, Wolfgang Mason, James Qualls, Bob Jones, Cole Daly and Isaac Canepa have all gone back behind the wall. That's a lot of chasers right there. And Carson Cup just got up in the wall. And they're wrecking again. This time Dylan Young was involved along with James Silverfox and Megan Atkins. Megan Atkins, the rookie points leader and the only rookie to have made this season's Mobile and Cup Series chase for the championship. Her day looks like it could be over. I think she may have been the one who got together with Carson Gum to trigger that wreck, and her car is smoking. James Silverfox, second in points. Two wins, five points back from Sean Galligan. He is coming down pit road. So is Carson Gum. Atkins, I'm sure, is going to retire. Yes, she is. Where is Silverfox? There he is. Let's see what the strategy could be for the 31. Can they get the Transformer Chevy back out? He is retiring as well. There's two more chasers behind the wall now. And that's going to dwindle the field down even more as LaPlante is going to stay out once again. He'll be the leader. We're nearing the halfway point, And we've got almost less. I think we do have less than 20 machines still left on the racetrack. Let's look back at a replay of what just happened. This happened again up at the front of the field. Well, they were getting really crazy back here trying to get around the lap machine of Ralph Mason who actually is the one that's going to trigger this wreck. Look at him get into the Megan Atkins machine, turn her in the left rear. Atkins then comes down, clips the right rear of the Bandit Woodchippers Toyota of Carson Gum and up into the wall they go. So that was actually a lap car that triggered that wreck. But Megan Atkins taking a hard, hard look. Look at Aaron Williams Jr. and Cody Lamas on the high side being able to get around. Dylan Young got some damage out of that. And there you see James Silverfox hitting the 77 as well. Daniel Voyles got turned sideways a little bit. He may have sustained a little bit of damage there on the AC Delco uh, Chevy Camaro. But what a tough break for Carson Gum Was running up inside the top 10 all day. He gets involved in an incident like this. Megan Atkins, heartbreak for her. No wins this season. Was trying to get up there, do something and maybe pick up a win, maybe move up a few spots in the point stands as far as the chase is concerned, but doesn't look like that's going to happen here today, and boy, Ralph Mason's going to have some explaining to do. Instead of getting out of the way, he ended up turning one of the lead lap cars and involving several of the leaders in this incident. We'll head back now to Green Flag Racing. Austin LaPlante is still the leader. LaPlante going to be the leader as we'll get the green flag once again, this time on lap 18 of 30. You would think with such a small amount of race cars on the racetrack we'd go into some kind of a green flag run with drivers being able to keep it clean no sir we ended up having a wreck right there up at the front of the field and it was Ralph Mason who caused it Mason will start on the inside line again you can bet these drivers going to be treating how they go around the 09 this time with extreme care LaPlante lines up as the leader let's give you a full field rundown again because there's not that many cars McCurry is in second Richard Johnson third Joshua Collard fourth and Sean Galligan fifth Cody Lamas is in 6th, 7th place Emilio Navarrete, 8th is Aaron Williams Jr., James McLeod 9th, and 10th is Dylan Young. Then it'll be Daniel Day in 11th, 12th Hayden Klein, 13th William Duncan, Daniel Boyles 14th, and 15th is Alex May. One lap down the 16th position, that is Ralph Mason. Drivers that were out after the incident that just took place are as follows, James Silverfox, Carson Gum, and Megan Atkins. Two more chasers right there in Atkins and Silverfox. And this is a big opportunity now for these drivers that have been able to continue on that are chase contenders that have not gone behind the wall as the green flag comes back out. Namely, Galligan, Navarrete, Dylan Young, the leader Austin the Plant, and James McLeod as well as Joshua Collard. Oh, they're three wide, four wide back here again. And this time they settled it. Richard Johnson moves to second, McCurry into third. But he's about to lose that position. Sean Galligan trying to close in for a spot inside of the top three. Meanwhile, Ralph Mason still playing havoc with these drivers back here. Emilio Navarrete, Joshua Collard, contact, and they're going to go around. Everybody going to try to avoid them. I think they're going to. 
two chasers getting together, the 99 and the 9, and they keep it going. I think Aaron Williams Jr. may have actually just gotten spun off a of 4 as well. And I think I hear some more squealing tires. Oh, maybe not. But I think Aaron Williams Jr. may have actually brought out the caution. I think he got spun around coming off a of 4, and then Joshua Collard and Emilio Navarrete made contact with each other. You kind of saw that coming, because they weren't giving each other very much room coming off of the final corner. But the caution flag is out again. Yep, we still can't seem to run the green flag laps here at New Hampshire. But Austin LaPlante, kind of almost utilizing the same strategy Danny Wells did. He has not been to pit road since lap number four, and he's still not coming down pit road under this caution flag. So let's head back, take a look at the replay of what happened to Aaron Williams Jr., and then the spin by Emilio Navarrete and Joshua Collard. Yeah, this was coming off of turn number two here. Hayden Klein and Aaron Williams Jr. battling for what I believe was the 8th position. Contact right there. Turns the 5 great clip Chevrolet around. And the fortunate thing was everybody was able to avoid him. Hayden Klein almost continued that wreck with getting up into William Duncan. But Aaron Williams Jr. able to hit the brakes. Get the car righted. Turn it around. And Aaron Williams Jr. was able to continue on. Now we can actually, I think, jump right up immediately to the Emilio Navarrete Joshua Collard machine see what happens here I thought this was something that was going to be triggered by the uh, Ralph Mason machine up ahead but not really it was really just a Navarrete again overdriving the corner and he's going to go up and into the nine car of Joshua Collard right here it's going to kind of crowd him you know the thing here with this track is you can kind of uh, drive this track like a flat circle which means that you go hard into the turn drive your car wide and then cut it hard back down towards the inside off of four or what Emilio Navarro was doing, where you drive the car wide into the corner, then drive it hard down to the inside in the middle of the corner and drive it wide off the corner. And I think what was happening there was the first part, the first line that I was talking about was what Joshua Collard was running. The second line was what Emilio Navarro was running. And those two lines seemed to intersect, and that ended up causing the two of them to make contact and not give each other very much room coming off turn number four, but they got away pretty well unscathed, did both of these chasers. I think that's the first bit of damage Joshua Collard sustained all day, though. But the caution flag's going to wave. Looks like those two chasers will be able to continue, though, as we're under the yellow. Let's head back to green. Less than 10 to go this time, so we should not have to contend with the Ralph Mason machine this time, I don't think. Well, here's the other good piece of news for chasers Emilio Nava and Joshua Collard. The caution ended up coming out for the spin of Aaron Williams Jr. When those two got together off of four, they slid across the star finish line in seventh and eighth positions. Neither of them came down pit road. That is where they will restart in seventh and eighth place inside the top ten. So a lucky break for them if you're going to wreck, I guess, wreck off a turn four and slide across the star finish line so you don't lose much track position. Austin LaPlante, though, has not been to pit road since lap number four, almost seeming like he wants to utilize the same strategy Danny Wells utilized in the truck series race yesterday. He'll be the leader. Richard Johnson up in second. McCrory runs third with Galleon fourth. There's the lap car of Ralph Mason. He'll be what the other drivers are up to contend with here under this run as it'll be a single file restart with it being nine to go. McLeod lines up fifth. Dylan Young sixth, seventh, Amelia Navarrete. Collard in eighth. Alex May in ninth and tenth is Cody Lamas. Then it's Daniel Day, William Duncan, Daniel Boyles, Hayden Klein and Aaron Williams Jr. That's the field that is left as the green flag comes out here. Richard Johnson appeared to have gotten a slightly better restart than Austin LaPlante. Let's see if he tries making any kind of a move here. The bump and run into turn number one right like that. Texco Havilland Ford coming to the inside of the Angie's List Toyota. And Richard Johnson, it looks like, is going to be dead side by side with LaPlante heading into three. Preferred line will go to the 28, but LaPlante could get the run off of turn number four. Let's see if he can. He seemed to slide up there a little bit, and no, the 28 of Richard Johnson has cleared him for the lead. And the caution flag is not out. I thought I saw yellow lights, but we are still green flag racing. So Johnson the leader. LaPlante back to second. Points leader Sean Galligan has moved up to third now. McCurry fourth, and now here comes James McLeod looking for that fourth position off of the Hellman Chevy. Dylan Young back there. He survived today's carnage. Joshua Collard has done the same. And Emilio Navarrete is somewhere back there too. I think he's just inside the top 10 right now in the 99. As Collard is, or not Collard, make that McLeod rather, is going to move by Anthony McCree for position number four. And Richard Johnson continues to lead the way, but Austin LaPlante has not let him get away. 
as far as distance. It's only about a car length separating him from the back bumper of Richard Johnson's Ford. Richard Johnson, former winner this season, ended up winning back at Altoona. He is not in the chase for the championship. Came into today's race 24th in the standings. And look at the 71 trying to get the run off the higher groove maybe coming off of turn two. Let's see if he closes up any distance. That appeared to just keep it at the old status quo of about a car length separation between those front two. Sean Galligan would love to be able to come up here and make it a three-man fight for the win, but time may be running out when Richard Johnson hits the stripe, which he's done just now. There's a total of four laps to go here today at New Hampshire. I think we're looking at the two that are going to settle it out. Look at LaPlante trying to move another groove higher again, trying to get a run off of turn number two. Let's see if he closes the gap up this time. I think he may have closed it up just a little bit. I think it's only about three quarters of a car length now, the separation between the 28 and the 71. Galligan, however, has not really seemed to close in on these drivers, so I don't think Galligan's going to be a factor in this thing. I think it will be the non-chaser Richard Johnson versus the chaser Austin LaPlante. We had a non-chaser go to victory lane in the truck series race. That was Danny Wells. Can Richard Johnson keep the streak going of two non-chasers winning here in a chase event? Jump back here, see if we got any battles shaping up here in the closing stages. Good battle here. Joshua Collard going underneath of Alex May. That would be, I believe, for the seventh position. The pole sitter, Daniel Voyles, right behind here, too. He's had a, done a good job of surviving today's race as Alex May is going to lose seventh place to Collard, and I think he's about to lose eighth place now to Daniel Voyles. Yes, he is. Two laps to go, and the advantage still remains about a car length, maybe a little more than the car length now for Richard Johnson, as LaPlante is trying every line he can to be able to get right up to the back bumper of Richard Johnson's Ford Mustang, but I think he may have run out of time. White flag in the air one last time for Austin LaPlante to try and do something here to pick up his second win of the season. Richard Johnson trying to hold on to pick up his second win of the season here in the Mobile Cup Series in Season 6. LaPlante, does he get any kind of runoff of turn number two? Not really. Still about a car length and a half, maybe even two car lengths now, the advantage between Richard Johnson and Austin LaPlante. LaPlante, I don't think he'll be able to do anything here. Richard Johnson just got to hit his marks, and I think he's got it. Off turn four for the final time. Going to victory lane since Altoona. Second win of the season for Richard Johnson. He wins the CNBC Prime the Profit 200 here today at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And Richard Johnson, really, we didn't talk a whole lot about except for talking about him in the running order, but Johnson was able to utilize pit strategy, keep himself up near the front, was able to avoid that big, huge pileup we had coming out of turn four. And at the right moment, he passed Austin LaPlante, took the lead, and never looked back. LaPlante could do absolutely nothing once he had fallen down to the runner-up position. So Richard Johnson, 24th in points, will be a multiple-time winner this season in the Mobile One Cup Series as he takes the checkers today. Let's take a look at our official top 10 results, as we always do. Johnson with the win. Highest finishing chaser will be Austin LaPlante in second place. Another chaser will finish third in Sean Galligan. That'll be enough for him to keep the points lead heading into next week, as far as the chase standings are concerned. And James McLeod, he'll be another chaser who'll finish well in fourth place here today. Then you got Anthony McCurry, he'll finish in fifth. Joshua Collard, another chaser, will finish sixth today. Daniel Voyles, the pole sitter, comes back to finish in seventh. Great run for him today at New Hampshire. Then you got Dylan Young, he really had to survive today's race, even from the get-go, as he got nailed from behind by Bob Jones, had rear damage all day long, but he survives for eighth, does, hit, uh, does the 30 car. That's another chase contender, by the way. Alex May is going to finish in ninth, and Hayden Klein, and what's going to be his final Mobile Cup Series start, Looks like he's going to finish today's race in the 10th position. I think we should actually go through the rest of the drivers that finish this race because this was a wreck fest and a race of survival, it would seem. A lot of chasers finished this race, but a lot of them didn't. Emilio Navarrete, he's going to survive for 11th place. That's a chase contender. And then the rest of the drivers that finished this race were not chase contenders, but had great runs. 12th place for Cody Lamas, William Duncan 13th, Aaron Williams Jr. in his final start in 14th, and Daniel Day, the last car on the lead lap, in 15th place. Ralph Mason finished a lap down in 16th, but uh, for finishing a lap down, that's a pretty good finishing spot for the 09. Let's take a look at the, where the rest of our chasers finished this race. All other chasers DNF'd from today's event. James Silverfox gets 17th. Megan Atkins in 19th. 20th was Jordan Hester. Danny Wells was in 22nd place. Sean Henley finishes in 27th. 
we look further down, we find the 8 of Trent Dunham finishing in 35th. Dylan Poteet finished in 36th. And then the final car to... Well, actually, no, that was it for the Chasers. That was it for the Chase Contenders. Dylan Poteet, the lowest finishing of 36th place. So, this race is over. And we are getting ready now to head to Thornton. The, oh, the track well known for its very dangerous turn of death. Coming off the final corner. These drivers are going to be on pins and needles, I'm sure, on the long bus trip or plane trip or train trip or whatever they're taking to Thornton because they know what awaits them. But we know what awaits us. We still got a Snicker Cup Series event to come here at New Hampshire. Going to see what the first race of the chase is going to bring in that series. Hope you'll be tuning in for that. As Richard Johnson brings up the win here today, his second win of the season. Congrats to him. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and come part of you today. Here comes your official picture result, overall points, standings, rookie points, and chase points heading into next week's race. You've been watching a production of the NC Ray, offline racing at its best. Zinedino, the leader! Zinedino, the poster, and there goes Madison Saber off! There goes Ralph Mason, second in points off! Oh my goodness! 